Hey everybody, so as you know, bike crime at the moment is a big thing, lots of bikes are getting stolen, and people do ask me regularly, how do you lock your bike up to stop it getting stolen? The truth is, no lock will stop your bike getting stolen, it will just take it, make it take longer, or it might put them off and they might take the bike next to it that doesn't have any locks. Now ideally what you need is big heavy chains and locks, and ideally more than one. Um, and the thing is, they're big and they're heavy, so carrying them around is a real pain in the butt. So I actually have a method the way that I would lock my bike up if I want to make it as annoying as possible to steal. I'm going to be showing you this on this Lex Moto Michigan that I've just recently painted the tank for. Uh, there's a video on that if you want to check that out. Subscribe to my channel, maybe join my Patreon, like the video, all those cool things, notifications, blah blah blah, you know, that stuff. Let's go down closer and have a look at the actual locks that I use if I want to make sure my bike is locked up the best I can without carrying too much stuff. Not saying this is the best way, this is just the way that I do it, and people have asked me how I do it. Okay, so this is a pretty standard lock, you'll know this type, maybe the sort that you have now. Um, it's got a supposedly cut proof chain, but it's not really. An angle grinder will get through it. This is the point, no lock stops someone stealing it, it just takes a bit longer. So you have, this is a disc detainer, I believe, style lock. I highly recommend two channels, Bosnia Bill and the Lock Picking Lawyer, if you want to look into how good actual locks are and how easily you can get around them. As you may know, one of my most viewed videos is me actually picking the locks on my bike um, to prove a point. But equally remember that they, they don't pick locks. They just chop the chains. They want manual entry. Anyway, so yeah, this is your normal shackle lock. And to carry this around with you, that's like probably three kilos of steel. But you can only lock up one wheel with it, really. And you can't really get far from the bike or round much. So what I do to make it doubly annoying is I incorporate one of these. Now this is a 10 or 12 mil uh, steel cable locking rope. Yes, you can chop through these quite easily, but the point is we're just trying to put people off and stop them from wheeling the bike away because that's the thing, that's what they do. Break the steering lock, get it in neutral, get the locks off, push it away, worry about starting it later. So to make it annoying, this is what I do. I'd stick this through here, and loop it through like that. Okay, so you've got a loop of this going through the front wheel. Then run that through the frame. Now if there's a, if you've got something nearby, like a post or something that you you know you can put this around, that's why it's good to have this piece of cable because you can actually get it around something that's much further away from your bike than just the lock. But you'll still have the lock locking the wheel. Um, it's just this adds an extra level of not being able to just walk away with it. Then we come back here and we take a hand grenade. Oh sorry, no, wrong video. Okay, so unlock that take the chain and then put that through the wheel however you wish to get it around things you know make it as annoying as possible so there we go so we've got these bits so it's obvious what you do now you take a mortar round and you what no sorry so you put those together put that through there put that through there and then we place a russian cluster bomb here sorry Again, so we've got the lock going through the wheel, through the swing arm, through here, coming down here, locking up here, around here. So you've got the rear wheel locked up. It can't be pushed away that way. And then this is locking in that cable, which we've got running up here. You could put that round something. Or if you can get the lock round something as well, that's even better. But the point is, you're just making this difficult for them. Loop through there. So they are not going to push this bike away unless they get the locks off. So I'm of the opinion that this sort of amount of locking going on is going to really put people off. I still think the Russian cluster bomb would do better, but honestly, there are many ways you could break into this. You only have to break that one lock, so that's one way of doing it. Cutting this, cutting this. But if they cut this alone, okay, well, they've got the front wheel free, but they're not, and they might get it away from whatever you've put the cable around, but they're not going to get the bike away because this is still attached and it can't be moved that way. Although they can then lift it. This is the problem with bikes, they're really hard to actually secure. Uh, if you're at home, ideal thing to do is have something like this set up. You can have a really big heavy lock and a ground anchor, which is a big pin put into the ground with an eyelet on the top. That's your very best bet at home, but if you're out on the streets, I'd be hard pressed to think something more than this. I mean, maybe an extra a disc lock or something. You know, just one of those little discs on. But as I say, watch those two YouTube channels I suggested because you'll find most of those, the little disc ones that just click on, you can snap them with a screwdriver. They're worth nothing. I think that this setup covers the 
lightweight enough that you'll carry it with you, but with enough extra protection. You know, one lock is good, two locks is better, but twice as heavy. That cable does throw something extra into the mix, and they're not very expensive. As I say, they won't stop too much for too long, but it is an extra help to stop someone just picking up and pushing it away. So really, all you can do is make sure you buy the best locks you can, and that doesn't necessarily mean the most expensive. Make sure you park in a place which is very visible to the public, hopefully under a camera or something, that's always good. Don't put it in some dark side street. If you can leave it in view, leave it in view. This is just the realities of, of life, you know, that if someone wants to steal a bike, they will steal it, if they have enough time. As, um, as I have to see from many of my subscribers over the years who've shared stories of and someone only just recently who's had their bike stolen. Um, it's devastating to people because it's not just a bike that can be replaced because of money. It's, it has memories and it has things attached to it. Another great thing to get is a GPS tracker. They're not even that expensive these days. And that is a way of knowing where your bike is once it's stolen. Because once it's out your eyes, the chances of getting it back are slim. But if you can keep track of it for a while, you might have a chance. So they're also very good. So there you go. If you like my idea or found this video useful, please remember to leave a like. Maybe subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. I do many, many different things bike related. And if you really like the content, maybe consider joining my Patreon. Uh, it really helps me to continue making these videos in the uh, the new world of YouTube and its demonetizations for nothing. I'm probably going to get demonetized for the, and I will note here, inert, inert, and thus legal bought from a shop online. If you don't know the reference, just search Spice 110 Hand Grenade Security System. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed this video and the other content on the channel, please consider following the links in the description to show your support.